over here. More Game Gear, because, you know, duh, Game Gear's awesome. Easy Route, Paperboy, what's the difference? So this is actually Paperboy 2. Now, Paperboy was a game that, like, I, I was enamored with on the NES, but never, or at least not when I was a kid anyway, I didn't get Paperboy for the NES. I had a Game Gear, though. Paperboy 2 was the one that I got. So this was the Paperboy that I owned from my childhood. What is the difference? Easy? Paperboy, pa whatever. Now, big improvement here. The house is on both sides of the road. Oh, I missed. <laughs> the gameplay is just so simple. It's amazing that something like this was an app. Was it? just an entire game, not just like a mini- Oh shit! Nope. <laughs> Alright, that came out of nowhere. Dalmatian! Robbing a video arcade, that makes a lot of sense. Give me your quarters, kids! <laughs> huh, mummy. <laughs> huh, got it on the doorstep. And is it over? Oh, nope, I have the obstacle course still. I actually fucked this up pretty bad. I didn't get any, uh, didn't, hardly got any houses. But, you know, I'm gonna get the obstacle course done. Oh, oh, yep, <laughs> crime ring caught. Smacked him with a, oh, actually I got most of the houses. Look at that. And somebody canceled. They didn't get their paper. <laughs> you know, I threw a paper against your house, just didn't land on your doorstep. Quit being a dick. Alright, well, that's the end of this one. Next game. What do we have? Star Trek! Oh, shit. Absolute. <laughs> Um, Star Trek Generations Beyond the Nexus. Yes, there was a Star Trek Generations tie-in game for the Game Gear. I think it was on the Game Boy also, but, you know, this one has color. <laughs> so let's jump into this. It was the Enterprise B with Captain... Oh, shit, I jumped over it. Oh, Space Combat! Everybody loves space combat games. It was like, um, the Tholians. Why the fuck am I fighting the... They weren't in... Whatever. Uh, <laughs> there was a PC game called, I think it was 25th, Star Trek and 25th Anniversary. That was largely, it was an adventure game. A point and click adventure game. But it had this sort of space combat that half the game you play as. And it was the best part about that game, in my opinion. Everyone loved that part. And, like, it was sort of pseudo-3D graphics, like what we're looking at here. And you'd fight other starships in the Enterprise. Oh, did I get it? So, a lot of other games had the same formula. And I'm a little surprised that the Game Gear was able to play this kind of thing, because this is really, like... I get that we're not actually looking at 3D graphics, like, and we're not even really using, like, a actual sprite scaling. We just have different sprites. They're loading in and out of memory different uh, sprite files in order to give the appearance of sprite scaling. And we're not really in a 3D environment. We're just sort of in one that sort of looks 3D and the... Yeah, it's, it's a lot of stuff, but it is pretty convincing and the Game Gear seems like something that shouldn't really be capable of this kind of thing. Like, I remember there was a... there was a SNES game that was of this sort, but they used like... The, oop, I got it. Got him. <laughs> used a Super FX chip, which was used for, like, the sort of primitive 3D graphics, and that was, like, really memorable. 
I think I might have done a first levels on that. But considering that the Game Gear was a portable game console in the early 90s, that was really just a kind of a... Really just a... Sega Master System that was portable. It's amazing what they could pull off. It's a shame more people didn't get into the Game Gear. Because it, it was more expensive, and the batteries wore down quick. And it didn't have a Mario game on it, but let's be honest. The Game Boy didn't have a Mario game, a good one at least, until Mario Land 2. But it did have a decent Sonic game. And it had a decent Streets of Rage game, and it had a, it had a lot of good games on it. People just didn't really... People, like, look down on it nowadays. Okay, Tholian. Didn't fucking fight you in the movie, but I'm shooting you for some reason now. <laughs> in the Enterprise B. <laughs> Creative license. Let's just call it that. I don't remember this game having... Being... I mean, the, the movie itself doesn't suit well to being a game. Like a lot of older Star Trek stuff, it was mostly a lot of, like, uh, talking and philosophical stuff. There was, like, one space battle in that movie, and it wasn't, like, an exciting one, really. And I got him. Am I done? Damn you, planet. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. But anyway, that was the first level. This is level two, so I gotta move on. So what is this? Oh, we're going back to Mortal Kombat and we're sticking with the Sega consoles. Not the Game Gear Mortal Kombat, of course, because I've already done the Game Gear Mortal Kombat on the first levels. We're gonna play the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive version of Mortal Kombat. And this wasn't the version I had in childhood. I had been an adult by the time I bought this version of the game, so... A little bit of a cheating, not playing through the games of my childhood here, but, you know, I did eventually buy this one. <laughs> now, Mortal Kombat released. It was an arcade game, and then it was a console game, so you had the Genesis version, you had the SNES version, and of course you had the Game Gear and Game Gear versions. As far as the home versions went, the SNES version looked quite a bit better. It looked a lot more like the arcade game than the Genesis version. The sprites were bigger, they had more colors, everything was more accurate in terms of looks. But the big problem, in my opinion, with the SNES version was not the lack of the blood code, which of course it did lack. I mean, it, the Genesis version was uncensored to an extent. You still had to put the blood code in to get the violent fatalities and all that shit. But, there's another problem with the SNES version that makes the Genesis version superior, and I don't hear too many people talking about it. And that is a strange input lag that the, Gen the um, Genesis version just doesn't have, that the SNES version does. So, you press a button, I mean, the original Mortal Kombat was never that good of a playing game. Street Fighter 2, which had already been released by this point, played better. But Mortal Kombat had, of course, the gimmicks of the violence and the digitized graphics, which were kind of unique at the time. So, okay, so it's, it, it looks alright. Plays like crap. Well... SNES version has a lot of extra input lag. Yeah. Not that it's a terrible game to play. But, you know, it's just not... It doesn't play good. The SNES version, however, does play like shit. Don't play the SNES version. Of course, since it looks better, people say, like, oh, yeah, it was actually the better one. It just didn't have blood. No, no. It played like shit. Oh, Sonya, I'm so sorry. 